Unbound Local Error. It is a funny error. It's a weird error. It's an unexpected error. And let me show you what I mean. So let's imagine for a moment you've got a variable called x. Okay, and x is equal to 5, and I can call x. And that's really awesome. It's, it's equal to 5. Now let's imagine you're creating functions because you like to wrap up your code and then call that function. So let's create a function called define function. We'll call it hello for now, open close bracket. And we're just going to print x. So the function really just prints x. I'm going to say hello. And I'm going to call that function, open close bracket, and then I get number five, which is awesome, right? Now, let's imagine for a moment you then wanted to make x equal something else. So x is now equal to, I don't know, six. Shift enter on that, and shift enter, and boom, we've got an unbound local error, which is kind of confusing, right? Because it's like, well, x exists here, and then I'm printing x, and then I'm just making x equal something else. But one thing you should know about Python is it pays close attention to scope. And what do I mean by scope? Well, first of all, this x here, x equals 5, that is in our what you call basically global scope in this sort of file or this, you know, interpreter. And then in here, we've got our local scope, which is local to a hello function. So if we just zoom in on our local function, what we're looking at here is print x, but x doesn't exist. But you're right, it's weird, right? Because then if I do that, it works again. Now that's because Python pays attention to the whole local scope and it says, okay, you're printing X and then you're defining X. Well, that's not going to work. So when you've got X defined here, it's going to ignore this other X. So how do you get around this? How do you actually fix this? Well, a couple of options. If it's not important to have X change, you might call something else. So maybe Y is equal to six and I go ahead and that works just fine. And then I can even go ahead and sort of print Y. Now, it's not ideal and I would avoid having the same uh, variable names outside of your function and inside of your function. It can be quite confusing. And that's why I love the unbound local error because it's like, hey, it's a bit of a bug here. So watch out for that one. A um, couple ways around it. Now, some people would say, well, what you could do is you could, um, well, let's go back to our curve, print now, print x equals six, shift enter, shift enter, still getting an unbound error. Some people say, well, you could say global, and now we're referring to the global x. Okay, shift enter, shift enter. And now that I've got x equal to six, I can now call x outside of that function, and x is now equal to six. Now that's, it's not ideal. Um, the minute you start modifying global variables and functions, the minute you get more than one, it becomes quite confusing. There is times where people encourage it. I'm not a huge fan of it myself, it's personal opinion. What I would choose to do is I would pass x in, and then I'd maybe return x. Uh, after it's been modified, something like this. So what that now looks like is I've got a new error. I um, haven't <laughs> haven't passed in my variable. And so in this case, maybe we'll ignore this one for a second and we'll say x equals, I don't know, 10, okay? And then it prints out our x, which I passed in. So x is passed in here, prints the 10. Um, then we're saying x is now equal to six and we're gonna return x. So now that we understand how unbound local error occurs, um, that's some ways you can avoid it. Now, if this is useful to you, uh, I've got heaps more tips, tricks, and tutorials, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, um, and I'll catch you in the next one.